Okay, welcome to Time Flies Quilt and Sews Block of the Month. My name is Connie Gole and I will be um, heading the charge here for everybody. Um, there are many ways um, to do the block of the month. You can do it virtually well, like we are here, or you can come to the end store, or you can mix and match. Let me see. Or you can mix and match and do some in store, some virtually, whatever works for you at the time. Um, our glorious summer is set up so that um, you get two quilt patterns at one time. You get glorious summer, which is the red one. Okay. And you also get um, summer whimsy, I had to think. It is not happening in my head. <laughs> Summer Whimsy, which is a second quilt. Um, I'll go and show you that one a little later. But when you get your pattern pieces, one side will be Glorious Summer. I'll show you page two. And this is not the one we're doing. So one side will say Glorious Summer, like this one, right? The mm -hmm. other side of the page will say summer whimsy. So be careful and look for that because those are the directions. You're getting both at one time. So be careful and watch for that, okay? I know some of you have received your fabric and some have not. And I've just finished boxing everything up. So it should the rest of them should be going out in the mail tomorrow um in many of the kits that are going out today and tomorrow um they are missing a fat eighth of a fabric and i wrote on your receipt that i owe you a fat eighth of a fabric i gave you enough to get through like the first three or four months with that fabric so you're fine and it is back ordered and they tell me they're going to send it to me so Fingers crossed and all that good stuff. All my thread did come in. So that, thumbs up on that. It was um, back ordered for a while because of the shenanigans going on in Germany. <laughs> so um, that's a plus. So that's in. So now it's just a matter of me getting it out. I have everything cut. It's bagged. It's boxed. So I just got to pop it in the mail. All right. So first of all, you will be getting in your box. Let me get a box out. This is Shirley's box. Okay, you'll be getting a box. Inside that box, you will get the first month's paperwork. Okay. Some general directions, you'll get a CD that has all the designs on it. You will have to take from the CD and put it onto a USB, the designs for the quilt, the embroidery designs. There's also a PDF file in here that has all of your um, threads. It tells you when to do your threads and I'll go over that. It also has, um, Cut work files, if you have the cut work tool for a Bernina. And it also has SVG files if you have a cutting machine, such as a Cricut or a Brother. Okay. And those are all included on this disc. So uh, what I did is I just selected them all, copied them, and then pasted them onto a USB. Karen, I have a question for you. Would you like, uh, since I don't have your disc, would you like to just purchase a USB so that I can just load those on the USB for you? That 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 would be that would be awesome. <laughs> okay, I will do that for you before I go today. Okay. 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 Thank you. All right. So the first page that you will receive is a diagram. Okay, it's a it's a very nice diagram of the quilt. You, I also include the cover page 
that is the colorized version, which is was very helpful to me when I was choosing fabrics. That's what I used. Okay. And on the back of that is the summer whimsy diagram. It's right there. Yeah. Which I want to do that one too. I can't do everything already. <laughs> So page one one is right here. On page one one, it shows you what we're going to do is we're going to build this quilt from the center and work out. Okay, so this is the center of the quilt. It's four blocks. Okay, and in the diagram. You'll see these are lettered. All these are lettered. The corresponding letters are over here. But you will notice it says pink one, pink two, pink three are all A. And over here, it's backwards for me. There's your pink. These are your pinks right here. Those petals are A's, are all A's. You have to decide which pink you want to put where. It's pink one, pink two, or pink three. Once you decide where they go, that's where they go throughout the four blocks that we're doing, okay? So I put pink one here, pink two, and pink three. That's what I did, okay? Another one that was not really clear, which was brought to my attention is, I think it was these is a blue green and a blue green too. I think I use blue green too here. Because it just says blue green. All right. So that's where you, you, um, I, what I did was I looked at the here and then I looked over here and what these numbers over here are the size of the fabric you need for your applique. Okay. But what I found is I didn't need that big of a piece. So this, the pink one, it said I, I need a three by four and a half inch piece. I didn't need that big of a piece. I I looked at it. And if you want to, you can measure it yourself. I am a, a stingy fabric girl. So I kind of did my own thing. All right. On here, on the back of this page, this is for rehooping. If you have an 800 series machine, you will not have to rehoop. If you have a 700 series machine, you will be rehooping twice. If you have the um, maxi hoop, okay? If you have a 500 series machine, you will be hooping either four or five times. And I'm going to do a demonstration on how to do that, okay? With, um, if you have the large oval hoop, you will be hooping five times. If you have the large oval hoop and the mega hoop, which is the big skinny long one, you will be hooping four times, okay? I have a PowerPoint that I can go through too, and maybe that'll reiterate things for you. But I'm going to go pull up on the machine, okay? Quick question. question. On your hoops, because I have a different machine. Your machine, you just... your machine will tell you which hoops you need to use. Okay. that's what. Well, that was one of my questions. My other question was, how big is your big hoop? Um, I don't know. Okay. Um, if it tells me, then that's good because it's... yeah, your machines always tell you what you're doing. Okay. Um, I had everything set up, and then Pam came and wrecked it. If you have questions, go ahead and ask them while I'm setting up. 
So Connie, do you think that um, Julie could just bring my my box to um, to Guild tomorrow? Who is this? Karen. Kendra. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. That helps. I also go to Guild. Oh yes, you do. So you could bring it. Actually, I have questions about your new thing too going on so yeah i'll save it for guild now oh, yeah. in these in the boxes had... that we ordered the threads was that included in the or was that yeah. thread separate you get a thread kit with your block of the month okay honey we haven't had to rehoop before is that going to be a problem nope I'm going to show you how it's done, Chica. Gracias, Chica. <laughs> <laughs> she's from Texas, so she speaks Spanish. I speak, sure. I speak Spanglish. Spanglish. <laughs> it is different. Spanglish is different. <laughs> Whatever works. Yeah. I'm from Texas originally, so, yeah. Well, I I'm, not a, I'm not a native Texan, but... Yeah. I saw the rehooping and I oh, Hey Shirley. Uh -oh. I didn't see I... you there. How are you? I'm hey. sitting in the dark. <laughs> Someone needs to mute, mute. All right. Connie, question. Yes. I had I saw the rehooping. And I thought I bit off more than I could chew. Is do you think so? Nope, nope. It's easy, okay? Don't get stressed over hooping. So I worked really hard on trying to get um so can you guys see the quilt in the background? What's what's on the screen for you? I, I can see, see head. your head and part of the quilt to the left and something else to the right. Yeah, and a board want, in the middle. I want this quilt. Now we went past it. Well, now I, just, I just threw my phone. Oh, on that's pretty. Right behind oh. you. All right. That's Pam's beautiful quilt. Oh my God, that is gorgeous. Yeah. Oh. Move up close. Okay. How's that looking? Pretty good. Very nice. All right. So I'm on a 790. Okay. So we're going to go into the files up here because we have a USB in, right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to go to my. I would designate just a USB just for this quilt if I were you, FYI. So the first one is the cut work files. The second one is the embroidery designs. The third one is the PDF templates. Um, those I would print out. I put it in your computer and print it out. Um, that has your embroidery. Um, it lists how the um colors all in order and you will probably want that printed out and then the last one is the F svg appliques okay we're going to go into here we're going to go to the exp files if you have a bernina so we want a page over so it does tell you what design to use in your paperwork, I know that we want to be at 1005 is where the designs that we're using start. 1005. 
and it's probably a glare on it, but it's right here in the corner. And that is for the 800 people because that has everything in it. The next one right here and right here is for 700 people. Okay. That one, this is the first one you do. It's zero one zero zero five a and one zero zero five b is the second one your second hooping one oh five c d e and f are all for the 500 series people if you have um and g g as well okay so C, D, E, F, G, that's five. If you have the mega hoop, you'll be able to use the 1005B because that's that big, long, skinny hoop. So you'll that's how you get the four hooping. So you would do C first, then D, then E, or yeah. And then you'll do the B one. And we're, I'm going to show you how to hoop D today because we did a 105C in class. So I'm going to show you how to do this one today. So, uh, but I'm going to pull it up so you can see it. So I'm going to pull up C. And what you'll be doing is you'll be stitching this placement line out and then you'll put your fabric down. Okay. And you'll be stitching that placement line right onto your stable stick. And I'm going to show you hooping and everything, so don't worry, okay? But we are going to do this one today. Okay, the, cause this one's a little bit um trickier, but it's not so tricky that we can't do it, okay? Are we supposed to see the design on that on your screen? You can't now. Okay. <laughs> no, but I meant, okay. It probably had a glare on it. There's not yeah. much I can do about that. That's That's fine. So here was our first hooping that we did on the Friday, okay? So this was pink one, pink two, and yellow. And you, what you'll see on the back here is I took my red, and that's cut to 15.5 inches square, and I took another piece of 15... 0.5 inch, um, what's that called? SF 101 mm -hmm. Shape Flex is what we use in the store. It's a, a woven interfacing that you iron to the back of fabric. So I ironed a 15.5 piece on the back of, so of that piece. Okay. And then I drew a lines You'll see my lines here to mark the center. So you fold it in half and mark that line and then fold it a half again and mark that line. So you have the center fixed. This saved me because I accidentally um, I accidentally took my stuff out of the hoop just one step too soon. And so I lost my markings that my machine was doing for me. So it, it really did actually save my bum. Okay. So at the end of the stitching, it stitches these little placement X's. And we kind of need those little X's on our fabric. Okay, so we're gonna hoop. We're gonna put this in the hoop um, and we're gonna stitch the second part, okay? So let me grab a hoop and some stabilizer. Any questions? I have a hoop, Connie, that 
says it's uh, 150 by 400. What size hoop is that then? Just one sec, I'm grabbing some stabilizer. Now, what was that, Mary? Was that Mary? Yes, I have a hoop that is uh, 150 by 400. Is that a mega hoop? I don't see a picture of you, so do you have a picture of the hoop? That's a mega hoop. That's a mega hoop. Uh, um, Connie? Yep. Yeah. I saw that you had a stabilizer on the red, the SF-101. Uh, why do you need an additional stabilizer and, which, and what is it? Okay, SF-101 is like a cloth and you iron it to the back. Okay. Okay. You, I've never used it before, okay. I use it almost on 80% uh, of everything I embroider. FYI. And you buy that on the roll? Yes, you can buy it on the roll or you can buy it by the yard, either way. Okay. Can so you say that again, hoop. Connie? What is it? SF-101, Mary. Shape Flex. So I take my hoop and I look for the, the, the triangle. So I'm going to hoop this. I'm going to put this on here, and I'm going to cut a big enough piece. And this is stable stick tearaway. It has the sticky back to it. And how I hoop is I tear this right off. I take this like this, and I tear the paper, the paper part, which is the shiny side. I'm going to tear it right off. Okay, so this paper part is part of it. We're gonna throw it on the road. We're gonna take our hoop and we're gonna stick it right to this sticky stuff. So see it sticks, it's kind of it's tacky on there. You'll thank me for this tip later. So <laughs> I make sure my hoop is open. So I'm doing this on the large oval hoop. And you just stick this in here like a so. Okay. So the purpose of all these stabilizers, okay, is to prevent puckering. Um Puckering happens when your fabric cannot support the stitches that you're putting on it. So we need to give our fabric as much support as possible. So that's where we're using stable stick. We are also using either a lightweight or medium weight tear away. So I'm just gonna cut a piece off here. Grab some tape. And we're going to turn our hoop over. Honey, the SF-101 you only do on your background fabric, right? Yep, just on the background fabric. Okay. A little bit big, so I'm just going to cut this down. We just need this to cover the back. It doesn't have to um, cover everything. It's just going to give our um, fabric just that little bit of extra support. And just tape that down. The PowerPoint that I have on this is helpful. It is loaded into the group. 
Okay. If you're not in the Facebook group, you can go to Time Flies um, Facebook page and search for BOM and it'll take you there and just ask to get in, okay? I tried to send everybody an invite, but if I miss you, that's the easiest way to get in, okay? So there we are, we're hooped, we're ready to go. So where did you put that PowerPoint? The what? Um, where, where did you put the PowerPoint? Actually, I think that Pam sent it to everybody in an email. Oh. Yeah, I got mine in an email. Okay. Okay. I'll check. I will try to get it loaded onto the Facebook group as well. Because I think that's just a great place to have everything, a central location for everything, my opinion. But will this be, will this be on the uh, Facebook group too? It will be in YouTube. Pam a... will um, we'll okay. load it into our YouTube channel. Okay. Okay. So now I'm going to tell my machine over here. Let me go back here. And I am, I apologize for it being so glary. Let me go into settings and see if I can turn the lights down. Not that one. Still glary. I think it's just glary from the real light. So I think she stole my foot. You're going to have to have a talk with her. I think I will. I'm going to need a good Yeah, she was showing someone a machine earlier and We're going to tell it we put the 26 foot on. We put the food dogs down. And we're going to tell it that we want to sew. We'll push the green, the sew. It's going to wiggle. And remember, um, for our new people, do what the machine tells you to do. If it tells you to wiggle, then you wiggle it. And now it's showing me put the hoop on. So I'm going to put my hoop on. What do you mean about wiggle? So right now it's telling me it wants to wiggle. So see, it's saying it wants to reposition itself. I just need to hit that green check. Got it. And it'll reposition to where it needs to be. I'm going to check to see if I have a bobbin in. Maybe she stole that too. Oh, no, I got a bobbin, but it's empty. Figures. Luckily, I have another one loaded, so we're ready to go here. All right. And we need thread in the top. So with the oval hoop, how many times do you re-hoop? 
With the large oval hoop, if that is all you have, you'll be hooping five times. That's the one that came with the machine? Yes. If you have um, a maxi or a mega hoop, it'll cut your hoopings down. Okay. And it tells you exactly how to do it in your directions. Okie doke. So the pages that I gave you, it only has for the large hoops. Okay. You'll have to print out the PDFs for the directions for this rehooping, which I'm going to go grab here. And Connie, did I understand you right? If I, if you have an 880 and you have a maxi hoop, you don't have to rehoop. If you have an 880 with a jumbo hoop. Yes, I have a jumbo. Okay. Yep. So you won't have to rehoop. So this. So your, your templates will have a section like this, okay? And okay. it'll go through how to, it tells you exactly how to re-hoop. This one is for one of the um, corner blocks. Let me find the ones for our blocks that we're doing right now. Okay. So this is the one I just did, okay? And now we're moving to this one, this green one right here. So we're gonna follow the directions for this one. Which are different, but we are going to load our, I'm all threaded. So what we're going to do is we're going to do the placement line first. And you're stitching into the sticky stable stick? Stitching right onto the stabilizer. The stable stick. Yep. Okay. This is the stable stick and with the um, fairway on the back. And, and no fabric on top. So this differs from the first hooping because it's going to put some placement markers on here, okay? That you don't need in the first hooping, but you do need it in the second hooping. So now it's gonna do placement markers. Those X's I showed you that were on the first piece, it's gonna do those. I did have one that didn't stitch them. It like felt the stitching fell out, but the X's were still there. I could still see where they poked in. So I was saved. I could you still use it, okay? So I'm gonna take my hoop off. And we're going to position this onto the hoop. And I'm going to read these directions, okay? Because this one is slightly different than the first one. The first one, we folded this in half like this, right? And like this. And you would position it into that corner, into the corner like that. And you would unfold it. I have it back. I have it backwards, but I hope you get the idea.
harder than it looks backwards. So the first one you would have done like this and see how it lays it out, right? So this one goes a little bit differently. Though so these two markers are gonna match up with these two markers. Okay. But it tells us huh. in the second embroidery, we brought up the design already. Oh, I think I might have lied. What's this? Just a minute. Let me read here. No, you're no problem. Okay, now I see it. Okay, I it was sometimes when they turn things, my dyslexic brain doesn't like it. <laughs> so we're using um, design 1005D for the second one because we already got the first one, right? We did the sew placement line and then we we're going to turn, we're folding it like we normally do. We fold it up <laughs> and then over. I've got this. Started my Zoom meeting like I was supposed to be at, but I'm here. <laughs> okay, you're here. Okay, and then we're gonna I'm, turn I'm it doing... 90 degrees. Okay. This is the part that it might mess people up. Oh. Okay, so you have to turn it 90 degrees. Oh. So that means you're going to turn it like. Turn it 90 degrees. Like this. And we'll do that. Does that sound okay? Okay. Connie, can you have Cheryl mute? Cheryl, can you mute, please? Because I'm having the brain part and I don't need any help. So we're going to, we did this. And then you match up your pieces. Match. So this is why I needed those lines so much because I was having a hard time matching it. So the lines really helped me to get it correct on here. And then you open it up like this. Can everybody see that okay? Yes. Yeah. So then these X's line up with these X's and you want them to be good. Take it off and move it however many times you want. This is the only part where I differentiated from her was she had you dropping the needle to find that these points. I found this way to be better for me personally. And this only affects those people who aren't using a maxi hoop or mega hoop, okay? You other people that have those hoops, you're going to do this whole side. Okay, you're going to do this whole side way easier than what we're doing here. Okay, so I think we're good. I think we're pretty close. I think that looks fabulous. My lines are all matching up and down. So I'm checking this line to make sure it matches. I'm checking up here. Yep, I look I look good. I look good. So we're gonna take this back over to the machine. This is the only one I saw that you have to turn like this. So if you can get this, you're golden. All right. So now we're going to be doing a placement line. And that is where our fabric is going to go. Okay. Closer so you can see. 
and I'm going to hit go and it's going to do my placement lines. And that's where our fabrics are going to go. And then it's going to tell us what colors we need. The screen will tell us what colors you need. And it is correct in my machine. Um, so that's a plus. Um, but the I like to have the sheets printed out so that um, I know what to get out in advance. Connie, I have to leave. I have an appointment in 15 okay. minutes, so I'll pick okay. up the rest on video. All right. So now it's, there's a cutting line. We got to put our fabric on. Connie, I have to step out as well. Thank you very, very much. Yep. So um, I will try to load that PDF. And if you have questions, please um, get to me through the group or email me, um, Connie at timeflyscoltonsew.com. Okay. Many ways I to find to me. All right. Over to Connie. Uh, I, lo I love you, sweetie. I Talk have to, to leave you later. Too, okay. So we need blue, green, Not that one. Two, I believe. Connie? Yes. This is Cheryl. I have to leave as well. I'll get the video. Wow, everybody's leaving me. I'm in an appointment right now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I put all of my pieces in bags and then I label them with the colors. So it's, um, I, it tends to help me to stay organized. Yeah. Where, oh, where did my other blocks go? I have a, a quick question while you're hunting. Absolutely. Go ahead. Um, the stabilizer that you used, not on the fabric, but what you had in the hoop, you said that was a sticky one? Yep. It's stable stick tear away. Stable stick tear away? Yep. And it's then the I hoop. put a tear away, um, lightweight or medium weight on the back, taped down. Medium or lightweight on yep. top of that? On the back. So you have two stabilizers. I'd have two stabilizers, one in the hoop and one taped to the back of the hoop. Oh, okay. Yep. That's where I was getting confused. Yep. So they're all, two of them are both tear away. Yep. Okay. And it so doesn't care what type it is, as long as it's a sticky one. Mine is OESD brand. Oh, oh, okay. At the shop. Okay. So this is blue green too. It's going to be our leaf color. I have Tyrael Magic this fabric. Um, if you're not familiar with what Tyrael Magic is, it's a heavyweight starch. I spray it on. I put it in a misty bottle and I spray it on my fabric. I put it on the back side of the fabric. I put it on the reverse side. Okay, and then. I let it soak into the fabric a little bit, and then I iron it till it's dry. You can Good thing I there. accidentally bought two bottles, hey? Yeah, <laughs> I can go, go, go. Uh, the, I think a great idea is to Tyrio Magic all of this fabric ahead of time. All of these colored fabrics that are not the your background fabrics are all for applique. So you could go through and tear your magic, all of it. And that would save you time later. So whether you're using a cutting machine or you're cutting by hand, you're going to want tear your magic on all of these applique pieces. Um, 
I like it so that it's pretty stiff, like a, not quite cardstock stiff, but not like um, line paper stiff either. Just kind of, It's kind of in between. I like it to have a little bit of give, but not too much. It makes your cutting around the pieces much easier. And we're going to put this on right now. Let's see if this chunk that I have saved will fit. Okay, so here's my, you want to cover up all of these lines. And mine doesn't quite cover them up. So I'm not sure which way it's going to go. It looks like it's going to go on this one. I'm going to cover those ones up first. And don't be afraid to stop your machine if it needs stopping. Okay, so I can do this one too. If it goes to the top, I nope, I can't do that one. So I'm going to stop it. And I'm going to cut these ones away so that I can um, do this last one. I'm going to raise my foot. I'm going to take the hoop off. So now we can learn how to cut. And um, everybody, I use the OESD scissor. Or no, I don't know if they're OESD. These are the ones, Quilter Select applique scissors. Mm -hmm. They have that nice sharp point on them. These are the bomb. So to cut this, we're going to go in, I want to save as much fabric as I can. And you lay this part flat against the fabric and cut around like this. Connie, when you machine applique, you just lay the fabric on top of your, your base fabric? It's not stuck on there with anything? Nope. Cool. If you are using a cutting machine, uh -huh. you would put um, seam a seam light on there. Uh -huh. And then you would be able to um, just iron it down. Right. Okay. Because I, I do have a Cricut, so I'm planning yep. on using. What kind of Cricut do you have? Uh, the the original um, Cricut maker. Okay. How does that cut fabric? Is that good for you or? Um, yeah. Okay. I have the Maker 3 and I love it because I can use that um, wheel. They have a cutting wheel for the Maker 3. Yeah, they have a cutting wheel for the original maker also okay so here's two of them so i'm going to put this fabric back on and see if i can get some more out of it i'm like a stingy fabric lady person after my own heart and if you are not comfortable stopping your machine don't do what i do Okay, you're going to want to stop your machine or just cut the appropriate size piece and let it do its thing. Otherwise, you're doing what I'm doing and like being the stingy fabric lady. And you don't have to do that unless you want to. So I'm going to position this. It's going to go to this one right here. So I'm going to position that there. And it's going to do that leaf. I do a lot of appliques, so I am like really comfortable doing this.
and I'm going to stop it. I'm going to cut this away. I'm just going to do it right on the machine and I will clean this up later. If I was at home, I would take the time and I would be all good about it and everything. So that won't fit like that. You want to make sure all of the stitching underneath is covered up. And I think I can make it. Watch me go. Oh, I told it to stop. I missed a little bit right there, but it'll be fine. Get this one away. That um, little piece that I missed is going to be covered up with um, stitching. Okay, so we'll trim that away. So now my machine is telling me I'm going to use um, color 5743. So we'll be changing our color and I'm just going to trim these out. Okay. Any questions while I'm doing that? Nope. Um, another pair of scissors. OESD has a little, a, a little fine scissor that I like to use too. When I'm doing like the little circles in that, it really came in handy. So if you're cutting this all out by hand. So the stingy fabric lady in me just saved like a whole five by five piece. <laughs> <laughs> so another thing I do is sometimes if you need more tension on it to cut around like really close, like in this one, I'll push a little bit on the back and then I'll go in there and get it. So I'll push on the back with my finger and then I can get close because you want to get really close. If you have, um, if you're not close enough, it won't get covered by your stitching and you'll have little fuzzies showing. And you'll think it is like your thread or something. It's not, it's that you didn't get close enough with your trimming and it is, it, it, it just makes your life a little tougher. And your stitching won't look quite as nice. So the super beginner in me wonders, um, are those leaf pieces basted down that you're trimming or did yes. you? It did a tack down stitch is what it's called. Can you see it? Oh, yeah. Okay. Because I was like, how are you getting that to stick to that fabric? But see how this one, I kind of missed it a little bit, but that's going to be covered up with stitching. So I'm okay. okay. All right. I, only get, I only get a B for that. <laughs> take off points for that one. <laughs> so if we want to use the whole piece, and then if just you cut use the whole it. piece, you won't have my issue. Okay. I, mm -hmm. For beginner, I think I might yes. use the whole piece to start. And <laughs> I absolutely agree with you. If you're a beginner, just put the whole piece on there and don't be like him. Yeah, I can be <laughs> pretty stingy too. So I was like, oh, I have to not try to be stingy for a while. Um. Fifty-seven, forty-three. Where are you? 
5743, what color is that? Well, the last pages. Oh, that's the one I switched. <laughs> Okay, how do I get to the second page on this machine? Page over. Well, let me go over. Let me go back here. Oops. Have you USB in? Yeah. You got you're in the wrong kind of file. That's why. Oh, I'm not. Embroidery. Here. There's some. Yeah, that's templates. That's what I'm the, the, the wrong thing. The EXP. Thing. EXP. Okay. That's where I went before. And that's but all I still get. Still templates. Mm -hmm. still, still the wrong thing. That's all I get. I don't think it will be cut files. Yeah. These are cut files. That's mm -hmm. why. Yeah, I went all the way to the bottom of the page. Yeah, these are cut files. You don't have the right files. Okay. Okay. So I have to go back and reload yeah. all over again. Oh, well, at least load the ones that you're missing. Oh, let me see. Connie, on that stabilizer that you scotch taped to the back, is 40 weight too heavy, or do you want to go a little bit lighter weight? I have a, I'm using a medium weight right now. I have mm -hmm. a lightweight at home that I use, and, and it's fine. Okay, so you don't notice the difference in the stitching, just whether not. it's a medium or a light. Yep. Okay. Like right now, I have a medium on, and I truly didn't notice a difference. Okay. So I'm all threaded up. I'm ready to go. And now what it's going to do is it's going to do the top stitching on that. It, I'm going to hit the green button and it's going to go. You see, it's going to, what it does is it does, it's doing, um, kind of looks like a little straight stitch and then it'll do a foundation stitch and then it's going to do the um, satin stitch on there. And it's going to look like that. So pretty. So yeah. pretty. <laughs> Isn't it though? It's so pretty. Do you think that the material, the uh, material magic helps in making it look a little bit crisper? Absolutely. It mm. makes it look crisp. It reduces puckering and it makes it easier to cut. Okay. Either either if you're cutting on a cutting machine or cutting with scissors like I just did. I didn't find this super taxing to trim out one of them. I did like a super novice. I did five hoopings. I did um uh I cut them all out by hand. I wanted to see how long would it would take for me to do it if I didn't have all the luxury items that I have. Right, because I have a lot of new people. It takes time to collect things. I understand that. I don't expect people to buy every single item that you will ever want for embroidery. Um, yes, they are convenient, uh, but do you need them immediately? You can do this without it, without a lot of things, but it makes your life easier if you have big hoops, right? It makes mm -hmm. it easier if you have the right scissors. 
It makes it easier if you only have to hoop it twice instead of mm -hmm. five times. It saves like an hour and a half of time. So it depends on, you know, do you have more money than time? <laughs> right? Time is important to me. Mm -hmm. So I have all, I have grandkids that need stuff made. <laughs> Little stinker bells. Um, we could, I could load my PowerPoint while we're sitting here and we could go through that if you want. So Connie, if you have it in the hoop, you can stop and go do something else and come back. Um. <laughs> so if you are doing, I would finish a hooping at a time. And then if you have to go do something, you can go do it, okay? Um, but I, I do like to finish a hooping at a time because once your one hooping is done, it's just like doing a whole nother project, right? Um, you can put your machine for my Bernina folks into eco mode. So nothing will bother it if you don't want, if you can't finish that one. Um, it does load to the middle of your machine, so you could redo it, but just never take it out of the hoop, right? Until your one hooping is all done. Mm -hmm. Because if, once, you, once you take it out of the hoop, you're bumming. Is um, the hoop that you're using right now, is that considered the one that you have to do five times? Yes. The, the size of the one that you have right now? Because yes. I was trying to judge if the one I have with the other brand machine is about that size or if I it think might it be is bigger. very close to this size, Naomi. Um, you probably will have to hoop five times. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm going to have to... I I will. That's what I was trying to figure. I'm going to watch the whole recording over and over again before I even start. <laughs> I know I, I'm pretty confident I can do the ironing really well. <laughs> because I can iron like a wild one, right? <laughs> yeah. And everything else is, uh, I'm a super beginner. <laughs> beginner is okay, but you have to be a brave, what I say is be a brave beginner. Um, yeah. if you mm -hmm. want do a practice one why not <laughs> get some scrap fabric out coop that bad lad up and do a practice one if you're really worried that's and a great it, idea it and if it turns out i have a some of that fear is uh -huh. if you just coop something up do a practice block mm-hmm and I think once you get a couple of them done, you'll be going, okay, I get it. I understand now um, how the stitching is going. Um, I like that idea because I've been wanting to make some pillow covers and I would have a... <laughs> it's it a nice large size block, so it'll be pretty. Um, okay. Yeah. So, that would be fun because of not having the material yet. You could practice before you get the material. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, you that's won't be, she doesn't have the oh the yeah files or anything either. Well, poop. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, you will be okay. going out in the mail today or tomorrow. Yeah. Well, for sure tomorrow, but whether um, they get picked up or not is another story. That's uh, that's not a problem. I am so backlogged on stuff right now. It, it's like <laughs> can't even get my nose above water. Um. The I am going to have to go to Alpena this weekend. You have any runs to Alpena? Save some shipping. No, nope, I don't. Okay, we'll just do the regular mail thing then. <laughs> I um. um... <laughs> so just the FYI, the large oval hoop size is a five point seven by ten. <laughs> Thank you for, I'm writing all these notes down. 5.7 by 5. 10? 7 inches by 10 inches or 145 millimeters by 255 millimeters. That's what the large oval is. Okay, and that's the one that you have to do only twice. Nope, five times. That's the five, that's five times. times? Yeah. Okay. I'm Thank doing, you. I'm doing mine twice on my 700 series. 
And mine mm -hmm. is a maxi hoop that's an 8.3 by 15.8. 8.3. Wow, that's a big one. That's big. <laughs> that's really big. big We're going to be using yellow gold on the rosebud. And do, 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 medium olive green. Nope, not medium. Dark it's dark olive green on the leaves for the rosebud. Connie, got a question. Yep. I used pink one on all of my flowers on this first block instead of taking you, pink one, pink two, pink three. What do you think I should do with my other three blocks or should I start all over again? Now, what did you do? I used only the one color of pink. I used pink one on for all three of the flowers, the roses. I would do all of your blocks with the same pink then. So I'm gonna have to get more pink then. I, I was I thinking of doing more. each block like a different pink, like do one block in pink one, one block in pink two. Let me show you the quilt, okay? And then you can decide if that's for you or not. How about that? Would give it a little bit of diversity, hey? Yeah. So here's mine with just all the same color pink. Oh, see, that's pretty. Oh, yeah. I think I would, I think I would do it all in the same pink. Just that would be me. So here's the medallion. Mm -hmm. Oh, is that so pretty? Okay. That's the medallion we're doing. Mm -hmm. That's the one you're working on? That's... Okay, I see the leaves there that you just did. Yep. Okay. Here's the other quilt. <laughs> that is so... That's summer whimsy. Mm -hmm. that, is that the other pattern that was on the... Uh, yes, it is. With it? Yep. Did you make that one too? Not yet. No. <laughs> is there a kit for that summer whimsy? Are you going to make one up? They made some fabric kits for it. I think they're sold out. We can see if we can make any more. Um, what she did with that one is she used um the same fabric as we as we had for the stars in the garden quilt that we did. It was all Kim Deal. Um, so if you have Kim Deal scraps, that's what she used was the Kim Deal scraps. Yeah, I have more mostly K for something bright. Um, I think a K one would just be gorgeous. <laughs> mm -hmm. I like that one that funny. Pam did right there. That your those pinks mm -hmm. and the greens and that yep. turquoise. That's so the stunning. next thing we're doing is the leaves, and I wanted to show you. These are the ones I cut out on my cutting machine. This is how a cutting machine cuts. Is that and what you worked on last weekend with your Cricut? Yep. I had one that I cut. I think I used it. Well, no, it's not right here. So I cut one with the cutting tool. The Bernina cutting tool. I cut a set of them of four. This is what they look like. A little furry on the corners. They're edges. fuzzy on the corners and on the edges. But I used them on my quilt because I wanted to see how they work. Um, and they covered up just fine. I didn't have any like pieces sticking out or anything. Um, I think that this would be an option for someone who has arthritis, can't cut, mm -hmm. trim around all those little pieces, but doesn't mm -hmm. want to learn how to use a cutting machine like a cricket or a brother. This is an mm -hmm. option for those call. people. Say um, that again. If you didn't want to learn something new and you have a Bernina, using the cutting tool might be a good option for you. And if you had arthritis in your hands and you all that trimming was just very difficult, yeah, using the cutting tool could be a viable <clears throat> option. 
cutting tool would would oh you mean making the pieces yep with the has a but cutting I, tool. I i never know which one is the better brand do you go with the brother do you go with the cricket i use a maker three that's what that's the machine that i know and that's what i tell three. people it's the one i know okay and you've been happy with it yep how much does that cutting tool cost, Connie? The cutting tool for your Bernina is, I think, around 150 So it's just, it's, it's another step. Like I said, this by far was the easiest. The last quilt we did, the um, Stars in the Garden, was intensive trimming intense trimming this one mm -hmm. nothing like that this one is way easier like we were trimming out 15 leaves and i was like oh i was about ready to that's why i went and bought a maker three immediately <laughs> didn't i mary <laughs> mary knows mm -hmm. so well then my little yellow leaf. here's our it already made our placement line Okay, so I can place my little leaf. So you would normally, I'm not going to do it because for time's sake, um, you would go and iron this down. Actually, she has the iron on. I'll, I'll just run over there and iron it. I'll zap it real fast. Is it on? Nope, oh, now it's going to take too long. Got another one? <laughs> I like your makeup. I want to make your makeup. It's best if you if you have little tiny pieces like that to iron them down. I have the Cricut. I don't make any money from Cricut. I'm just going to let you know. <laughs> I had all these products before I started this stuff, except the Maker 3. I had a different um, Cricut cutter. And I didn't really like the way it cut fabric. This little iron from Cricut is the bomb for ironing stuff down in your hoop. Oh, I never the, thought about having to fit an iron inside the hoop. Yes. So <laughs> if you're using a cutting machine, you put that um, stuff on the back. Mm -hmm. You iron it down to your applique pieces before you cut them out. If anybody needs information on how to use a cutting machine, how to download files to your cutting machine, um, you should come on to our Sundays are so fun and I'll show you how to do that there. Mm -hmm. I have a little ironing pad that I made. So I'm mm -hmm. just going to iron this down. Mm -hmm. And I try to own it to stay pretty much right on the flower. Oh no, you can't see it very, I can't tip it up or it'll fall off. Is that that steam seam tool you use when you're yep. doing cutting? Yep. Otherwise, I would just use material magic. Yep. Okay. So if you're using, um, if you're going to cut it out, I still material magic it, and then I put the steam seam tool on the back as well. Because now look at it's all glued down. I took my little iron and I ironed just right on that flower. Mm -hmm. We're going to put it back on. We're going to change the color to. So you said you put steam steam two on the applique piece before you place it down. On the back only, that's only if you're cutting. Only if you're using a cutting machine do you have to put the steam a seam on. Okay. Okay. Well, I don't have that yet. So. Yep. Okay. Then don't worry about that. Okay. I think it's seven oh four. Yellow gold. Is it? Yeah. 
Yeah. So we're using yellow gold. I'm switching the color on my machine. It's going to do a tack down line or cut line on top of that. We won't have anything to cut, hopefully, right? As we cut <laughs> that with our cutting machine. So this way you, you get to see a little bit of both of how to trim out, how to, you know, put pieces on that are from a cutting machine. I have the rest of my flowers all cut out for later. That's the plus of using a cutting machine. So I'll show you. It's stitched the tack down. I have just a little tiny trim to do. Because remember I said I like it nice and close. Very little trimming to do on this one. That's nice. That's it. Now put it back on. Yep. My machine says 704. And we're going to hit the go. And it's just going to stitch that top crown of the flower. Okay. And then we'll be doing the leaves. And I think those leaves were dark olive green. So you're not switching any thread colors this time. I don't have any more of this, huh? Medium olive, Medium olive green. Mm -hmm. That looks like an oak leaf. Oh, well, there's some leaves. So the dark olive green, I don't have any material magic, so I'm going to go quick and material magic a little bit of this. I'm just use my little my little cricket I am here. So we're almost done with this hooping. This hooping is one of the smaller ones, so that's not too bad. Four fifty-four. Color I need is our next color. So I'm going to put this four fifty-four on. So that's going to be our leaf color. It's going to do a placement line for this one. Because we didn't do a placement line. We did one placement line for all of that other stuff. So you kind of have to watch that. Sometimes it will do a placement line for one thing. Sometimes it'll do a placement line for others, for a whole bunch of things. So this one, because the leaf goes over the flower, it couldn't do this placement line ahead of time. See, because this leaf goes over that flower, it has to do this placement line afterwards. Where before it did all that placement line all at one time. That makes sense. When you say the numbers in the colors of the thread, are the numbers on the spools so you can find them? They're on the crown of the spool. 
okay, good. <laughs> yep. Okay. So now we're going to put the fabric on there. And you can cut this piece off. I'm just going to lay it on there for expediency. And now we're going to trim that just like we did before. Honey, this is Deborah Cabisco. I'm going to have to leave. I'll catch That's up with fine, the. Hun. Okay, thank uh, you. Bye. Yep. So I'm going to trim this out. This is probably the longest meeting we'll ever have because. Um, I'm going over things in a lot of detail. Most of the other meetings will not go into this much detail um, unless I unless people have issues. On the Sunday time, it, if I have issues, would that be an appropriate place to bring them up? Yep, that's an absolute, absolutely. So it says I need to jiggle my thing. Oh, I must have touched something. So I must have touched something because it's making me go back. To the beginning. Well, it went to the beginning. So I'm just going through my steps to get back to where I was. So it did the placement stitch. We did that. We did that. We did a cutting line. So now we're here. We're mm -hmm. on step 10 doing the cover stitch for the leaves and it's going to do that yeah normally i would not do this with you we won't be probably doing that ever again um but mm -hmm. i wanted people who were brand new to see how the steps run um and mm -hmm. see how these stitch out um mm -hmm. Because I know I was going to have lots of questions, especially for new people who have not done this before, who don't know what a cutting line is or a tack down line is, you know, mm -hmm. those things can be confusing. So thus, it's a little bit longer of a meeting. And how many beginners are there this time? I would say Am at least real? half of my people are brand new to embroidery. So, oh, good, good. So, <laughs> okay. I'll I'll work on asking all the yep. so silly questions. So Sundays are a great the Sundays are so fun group is a great place to come with questions or if you just want to be stitching and have someone right there who can troubleshoot mm -hmm. with you that's a perfect place to come and do that. Um I it's open to everybody. Um is it online? It is in if you go to Time Flies Quilt and Sew, our Facebook group, mm -hmm. okay, yeah, and look up and search, put in the search box, B O M. Uh huh. You should see a, a B O M brought to you by Time Flies Quilt and Sew. Okay. Okay. Ask to join that group. I will let you in, and then once you're in, it's. We sew on Sundays from one to three. You can ask questions. Um, there are uh, four or five people in there from our last um, quilt two mm -hmm. that are in this one, and they can answer questions too. And you know, if I don't answer right away, I bet one of them will for sure. Okay. And they're very kind to beginners because yes, I have joined a couple wonderful. of times on Sunday. <laughs> yes, they're all so. wonderful. All you guy, gals are. Mm -hmm. That's, so we're very. This one is done. So this block is all the embroidery part is done. I'm, it's kind of glary. There, you can see it. So now it's wanting to stitch the markers again. You must stitch the markers. See, there is no, it always shows a flag when it's finished. There's no flag. 
Do we want to stitch these markers? This was actually a really good one to do because it um it was pretty it only had the two things so so these markers are for the next placement they are that's exactly what they are good and you'll see my placement was a tiny little bit off on this one it's a little tiny off so the next hooping that we do you will put markers on that thing just like we did for this one. So now I have a flag that says we're done. Here's the flag that means done. There's a flag now that shows that we have finished the embroidery. So we can go back over here. I can plug back in for my computer dies because that wouldn't be good, right? because <laughs> it's it's giving me the low battery sign yeah. that is not good no so we'll plug back in so we're really done with um how it stitches out so now we can take it out of the hoop so we'll just take it out of the hoop and then we'll rehoop we'll we'll load it back up with stabilizer So when you tear this away from the paper, you need to be careful so you don't tear your, your fabric or your stitches. And you don't want to dislodge these X's. That's where the X is. You want to, I usually take a scissor and cut around that. <laughs> So I'm going to cut around this really quick. The little excess, because I need those later. And I kind of like having the paper around them. It just makes it that stay in better. And then we're going to tear this away from the You can just tear it away. Okay. It's called, that's why it's called tear away is because you can rip it away. Sometimes you'll run into like this running stitch mm -hmm. that you might have to snip that stitch, but don't snip these stitches. You'll do that. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a good news nurse. <laughs> See right here, I'm running into that stitch. I'm just going to give it a little trim. Can you lift that up a little bit so we can see where, yeah. what you're talking about? So there's a the placement stitch that goes under this. I had to snip that. Oh, okay. Right there. So it would tear away. But you don't want to do the one that's in the middle. Right. You, you want to be careful. Okay. So this all just tears away. Mm -hmm. You can take your hoop off if you want. I still have my hoop attached. It might be easier without it. I'm careful, but I'm not like a fissy either. So I'm just tearing this paper away. And then I do pick out this stuff that's in the middle here. Mm -hmm. I, I, I use a little tool. If the, there's OESD has a little tool for that. If you don't have the particular tool, is there something else that might work? Yeah, I use, I can use my ripper. I can use, um, your stiletto if it's short yeah, a stiletto 
Um, you want to be careful not to tear into this backing fabric too much, okay? Because mm -hmm. I have a tendency to do that. But this little tool, it's an OESD tool. Okay. It helps you rip out. And they're not expensive. They're only, I don't even think they were $10 maybe. But it, what it does mm -hmm. is it helps you grab onto that paper. And pull it out. And pull it out. And that was the top layer, right? There's two mm -hmm. layers of paper on here. One is has that <clears throat> sticky. And that one's harder to get. So you have to be a little bit patient. This is what I like to do is sit in front of the TV and watch um, NCIS or uh, <laughs> Walking Your Dead, maybe. Your murder shows. My murder <laughs> shows, yep. Let's so see. Oh, you it, want to rip that it, up. But would, it, but would the, it be the backing material that's on the background? Mm -hmm on the 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 sticky stuff yeah, not the want, sticky stuff the the sf 101 yeah you don't want to take the sf 101 off that stays okay spill coffee on my computer oh uh -oh. no that's bad news Rich. so then this is just garbage so <laughs> right away i don't get too involved in um tearing that out right away I'll finish all of my hoopings and then I sit in front of the TV and and tear that paper out. Like all of this. Mm -hmm. So, so you do the it. entire medallion first. Right. I'll do this here whole piece. I'll do all five hoopings. Mm -hmm. And then I will um sit in front of my TV and, and tear the rest of this paper out. I just need enough gone that I can rehoop here. Okay. Okay. So now I have enough of this torn away where I can rehoop this and I'm golden. And the mm -hmm. other ones, you won't have to turn it 90 degrees like we did have to do with this one. The other ones don't have to do that. It'll be more straightforward hooping. This is the only one that was funky dunky. And that's all that you. I'm glad you showed that one because that seems like it would be hard to read hard and to, understand. Right. It's hard to understand. But the other thing that is good for you to know is that if those little X's don't line up, you know it's not in there right. Okay. If your line if your lines that go in the middle aren't lining up, and if those little X's don't meet the other little x's you know it's not right and you have to rethink it and reposition does that sticky stuff allow you to take it up and put it back down it does it's very forgiving it'll let okay. you i pulled that up like three or four times okay back down So that is um, rehooping and doing applique. And really, that's what you're doing over and over again. Mm -hmm. Would it be asking a lot to, um, if my box isn't packed and sent yet, if I go online and order one of those special tools to pick that stuff out, um, can you throw it in my box? I will talk to you in a little bit about that, Naomi. Okay. Okay. Sounds I will good. Message you. All right. Okay. Thank you. I know yep. myself with a seam ripper. I'm going to rip right through the top of the stinking quilt. <laughs> I actually did um, rip some of my stitches out on one of my blocks, and it was not fun to fix. No. <laughs> I. Um, I tried. What I did was I matched. I put a zigzag on my machine, and I tried to match the length, and I stuck it under there, and I zigzagged. To match, to tried. I cut, okay. what I cut was I cut some of this stem stitching that oh my. A, okay, I yeah. I cut that and no fun to fix. Uh, don't do that. Don't do, uh, don't do it like me. <laughs> um, uh, it was either that or remake the whole block. And I really mm -hmm. didn't feel like making the whole block, so... 
That's a little personality mark, right? Yep. It no longer is a show quilt, I guess. <laughs> Ooh, you know what? Mm. I'm going to have to plan a trip to the UP for when you have that quilt show. Yeah. That was in the fall, wasn't it? It is in the fall. Not till next year, though. We won't have one this year. We'll have probably have one next year. Um, I'm trying to think of any other questions, comments, or concerns for anybody. Honey, you mentioned um, like when I get my box or my kit for next month, it'll actually be pertaining to the 700 or no? Like for the two hoopings or is it, how, do the, how does each? So you have all of the information on that. It's all in your stuff. Okay. So when you get the directions for next month, let me see. What you will get is your background to fabric. It's the other red will be coming. And this is the sheet you will get. <clears throat> this is two, 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 one, two, one. Like all the ones you got for this month were all one, 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 two, one, three, I think. Mm hmm and so that is what you'll get, and then you'll get the background fabric for that. Oh, we okay. already have but, all the applique. But we have all the applique fabric? Yep, you have all the applique fabric except the people I shorted. Okay, so the fabric we received is all the fabric we're getting except for our background. Yep, so you'll get background fabric every month. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, so it's... Very straightforward. Um, like next month we'll be because we're do, building this from the inside out. Mm -hmm. So next time we're going to be doing these borders. Oh, okay. okay. So next month looks pretty light, really. There's not a ton to do. So if you, but there is so much to do in this month. I feel like if you didn't get all four of those done this month, you'll have plenty of time next month because next month looks much easier. Okay. Okay. I think then it'll give me a chance to get caught up. Yep. And you won't have to worry. You never have mm -hmm. to worry about get falling behind so much because um, we're always here. Okay. We're always <laughs> here. Um, someone's in the same place you are. Okay. <laughs> okay. It made me feel good when somebody said that they did the block of the month last time and hadn't even started yet. Yeah, I was well, like, they didn't oh. really do it then, did they? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, I don't want to be there, but I do want to. <laughs> I probably I, am going to be lagging behind. It's not bad. Um, mm -hmm. Anything else? No, I've gotten good support, though, from the first block of the month. So be encouraged, everybody who hasn't done one yet. <laughs> Shirley finished hers. Mary finished hers. Both of um, Shirley Best and Mary. Um, yeah. Oh, I saw the one on Facebook on um, where they gave it to the mom, her mom. Yep, that was um, Joan. Oh, yep. That was so beautiful. And she looks so happy. <laughs> she was Mary Ream, she also finished hers. Oh, did she? She's on here somewhere. Or she was on here. I think she had to leave. But yeah, that's the name I was trying to think that wouldn't come to me. <laughs> I think I covered everything fairly well. Um, if I missed something, forgive me ahead of time. Um, you can always come to me in that group. You can email me at connie at timeflyscoltonso.com <clears throat> i answer all the emails i think i'm very good about getting back to people quickly because um, i know what was that oed oesd tool name um is it like perfect scoring tool or something like so, that because you can score yeah. like oh, okay. i ripped that paper off 
But most of the time people put an X on it and they score and they rip that off. I find that um, tedious and uh, <laughs> hard to hoop. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. So I just rip that paper off right away. I stick it to my hoop and I get the perfect tension every time. So it takes, takes a lot of guesswork right out of it right away. Anything else? Kathy, you have any questions? Your mute is on. There we go. Is that better? Yes, I can hear you now, Kathy. Okay. I was wondering if I could purchase one of those USB ports um, with it downloaded on there from the desk. Sure. Okay. And then I have a couple other things I'll need. Um, but I will email you and then maybe we can, I can just come Thursday and I can get those other items from you as Absolutely. well at that time. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Sounds good. Thank you. You're welcome. Are we out of time almost? Wow. That time went fast. I know. I don't even know. It's 343. So it took me about two hours. That's what I figured. Two hours. Oh, thanks, away. Connie. You are so absolutely welcome. Yes, thank you for your time. It was great. Good, good. I hope I did good. Um, I know I missed a couple of things in my first one, so I hope I hit the high notes. I I'm looking forward to watching the. Oh. I want to watch the um, recording. Okay. <laughs> All right. I'll see you guys. Thanks again, mm -hmm. Connie. Yep. Bye. Good seeing everyone. Yep. Thanks, Connie. Fabulous. Bye. Bye. We'll talk Thank to you, you later. Know. Happy stitching. Yep. Thanks. If Bye. you need anything, you let me know. I'm here for you. Thank you so much. Thanks, yep. Connie. Yep. Nice. So you're a good teacher. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> and I am ending the meeting. So you guys have a great day. You too. Bye. Bye-bye. Stay warm.